This week you will be learning about the carotometer. The carotometer is an instrument that serves two purposes. One, to identify the amount and type of corneal astigmatism, and two, to identify the proper base curve of the contact lens being fit to the patient's eye. Before taking a keratometry reading, the first thing that should be done is to focus the eyepiece. Position the white back occluder vertically in front of the instrument. Turn the eyepiece cap counterclockwise as far as possible. Looking into the eyepiece, turn it clockwise until the plus sign becomes sharp and in focus. After you focus the eyepiece, turn the instrument on and look through the eyepiece. You will see a plus sign. Continue looking through the eyepiece. Turn the eyepiece cap clockwise until the plus sign becomes sharp and in focus. Do not turn the eyepiece cap back and forth as this will stimulate accommodation. The next step is to align your patient. With the chin resting in the chin rest, turn the chin rest elevation knob up or down so the center of the patient's forehead is resting against the forehead bar. Once the patient is positioned comfortably, we are going to align the keratometer to the patient's right outer canthus. Move the elevation knob up or down so the alignment marker is aligned with the outer canthus. Once this is done, occlude the left eye. Turn the instrument to point directly at the eye being measured. Looking from the left side of the instrument, you will see a bright white ring in the center of the patient's right eye. If the bright white ring is not in the center, you may use the elevation knob to center the ring. Once the correct position has been established, instruct the patient to fixate on the green light inside the instrument. Looking through the eyepiece, you will see the target Myers. Note, the target Myers may be blurred. If the target Myers are blurred, turn the focusing knob to clear the image. The black plus sign should be in the center of the bottom right hand circle. This is also known as our focusing circle. Turn the elevation knob if the plus sign is not in the center. Once the plus sign is in the center of the focusing circle, the optical axis of the instrument will coincide with the patient's visual axis. For this particular instrument, focusing does not depend solely upon the sharpness of the target Myers, but is accomplished by coinciding the double focusing circles into one circle. You will see two plus signs between the left hand circle and the focusing circle. To locate the axis of the corneal astigmatism, Turn the rotating grip knob so that the tips of the plus signs touch. If the patient has regular astigmatism, remember this is when the principal meridians are 90 degrees apart, the minus signs will align vertically. If the minus signs do not align vertically, the patient has irregular astigmatism. Remember, irregular astigmatism is when the two principal meridians are not 90 degrees apart. Once the axis has been noted, turn the horizontal measuring drum until the plus signs are superimposed. When the plus signs are superimposed, the horizontal reading is complete. Please note that the patient will make slight movements throughout your readings. It is imperative that the Myers remain in sharp focus, so keep your hand on the focusing knob at all times. Once the horizontal reading has been found, turn the vertical measuring drum until the minus signs are superimposed. When the minus signs are superimposed, the vertical reading is now complete. Keep in mind the patient will make slight movements throughout your readings. So keep your hand on the focusing knob at all times to keep those Myers in sharp focus. Now you're going to follow these same exact steps for the left eye. The scale of the horizontal measuring drum indicates the dioptric power of the cornea along the horizontal meridian. The meridian indicators on the axis scale are white lines. Horizontal axes fall plus or minus 20 degrees around 180. The scale of the vertical measuring drum indicates the dioptric power of the cornea along the vertical meridian. The meridian indicators on the axis scale are white lines. Vertical axes fall plus or minus 20 degrees around 90. Once you have completed your horizontal and vertical readings, we can now interpret those measurements. The first thing we have to do is determine if the two principal meridians are 90 degrees apart. 
180 and 90 are 90 degrees apart, so we have what's called regular astigmatism. Which form of regular astigmatism is present? Since the horizontal meridian is flatter than the vertical meridian, we have with the rule. The difference between the two principal meridians indicates the amount of corneal astigmatism. So just subtract the two readings, 43 minus 4237 is equal to 0.63 diopters. So we have 0.63 diopters of, with the rule, corneal astigmatism for the right eye. Now you do the left.